In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to create some simple 3D football badges using just Adobe Illustrator and After Effects with no plugins or presets. Let's begin. Just a quick message guys, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Cheers. Step 1. Creating vector layers from your badge. Before choosing your badge to take part in this tutorial, in order to get the best results, I recommend using a badge that is made of flat colours and doesn't contain any colour gradients. So to start things off, I'm going to drag my chosen badge, which in this case is the Leeds United badge, into a new Adobe Illustrator file which I've created at 1080 by 1080 pixels. Once dragged in, I'll resize and align my image to the centre. Now I need to turn my image into a vector layer, so I can separate each section of the badge onto its own individual layer. To do this, I'm going to use the Image Trace feature. With my image selected, this window will appear at the top of my screen. Click the arrow next to the image trace box, and with my image only containing three colours, I'll select the three colours option. Obviously, if your badge contains more colours, use an option that fits those requirements. And then click OK when this window pops up. What this will do is it will trace around the image and create vector shape paths based upon the colours in that image. And once this loading bar has completed, the shapes have now been traced from my original image but by default, it creates a white shape within the blank space of the original PNG. To fix this, I'm going to click the expand button here. This now means I can select the shape paths which have just been created, and I can now remove this white shape. I can remove this by double clicking on the white section, which will open up the badge in isolation mode with the direct selection tool or the A button selected, and I can click on the corner path of my shape and then simply click delete. Do this for every path until it is completely deleted. Now I can select every individual shape and copy it with Command C and paste into place on a new layer by clicking this button here to create a new layer and then clicking Command Shift V in order to paste it into its original position from where I copied it. And essentially you're just going to repeat this. It's a simple process of doing this for every shape and placing that shape onto its own layer and changing the layering order so certain sections are on top of each other to recreate the original hierarchy of the image. When going through, delete the path points for any leftover white shapes that might have been formed as you go along, and also delete any extra path points which aren't needed for that layer, such as these highlighted on this yellow shape here. Just make sure you're only selecting with the A button the inside path points and clicking delete and not doing it with the outer ones. Once these have been deleted, this shape has now been completely filled. Make sure all of your layers are labelled and placed on their individual layers before saving your project as an Adobe Illustrator file. And now it's ready to be brought into After Effects where I can turn it from a 2D flat image to a 3D object. Step 2. Converting your layers from 2D to 3D. Now I can import my Illustrator file into After Effects by dragging it into the Project tab window here. And then from there I'll make sure that the Import Kind box is set to Composition when this box appears and then click OK. This will load up my file into its own composition, retaining the file size of my Illustrator file and having all of my vector layers individually layered in my composition in the exact same order as my Illustrator file. Now at the moment, all my files are in 2D and obviously I want to change that and convert them into 3D shapes. So I'll select all of my layers, then right click and then hover over Create and then click Create Shapes from Vector Layer. And that has turned all of my vector layers into shape layers. It's already hidden my original vector layers and because I won't be needing them, I'm going to hide the layers in my timeline. All I'm going to do is highlight them all and then click this icon in my timeline and then by clicking this icon here, my layers will now be shied away so they won't appear on my timeline. From there, I'm going to add a null object and attach all of my shape layers to said null object by using the Pin Whip tool. And I'll use this null object as my main control layer for any animations that I want to add to my shapes. So that way I don't need to add keyframes on every single layer. Now with all my layers still being in 2D, I can't rotate my shapes on the X and Y axis, only on the Z axis. So to make these objects 3D layers, I'll select them all and click this button under the cube icon here, and that will make my layers 3D. And now I can move my layers on the X and Y axis, but there seems to be a problem and some glitching. Well that's because all of my layers are located on the same position in 3D space, so they're cutting into each other, hence this glitching effect. And there's no depth, it just looks like it's a 2D image that's been skewed slightly. To change this, I'm going to need to rearrange my shape layers and add depth to them to turn them into a 3D object. I'm going to start with the back of the badge and then work my way up. So I'll hide all of my other layers except this blue shape for now. I'm going to also rotate the null object so I can have a better view of my edits. To add depth to the shape layer, I'm going to need to go into the geometry options in my shape properties. 
By default, your project will have your 3D settings set to classic 3D, and therefore you won't be able to access the geometry options on your shape layers. To access the geometry options, make sure that your 3D settings are set to Cinema 4D. And then to add depth to the shape, I just need to increase the amount of extrusion depth in these options. The higher the number, the more depth gets added to that shape layer. And now that I've done that, I can now move on to the layer above and do the exact same. But wait, when I turn on this yellow shape layer that's above, the glitching is still there. Well, that's because I need to move it forward in 3D space so the front of this yellow layer doesn't clip with the blue layer below it. By clicking the P button with this layer selected, I can see the position numbers of where this layer currently is. On the third number here on the yellow shape, it's currently set to zero, which is the same as the blue shape. So I need to move it forward by subtracting this number, which will move the shape closer towards the front of my composition. By making it minus one, it's now placed above the blue layer. But because I want to add some depth to it, like the shape below, I'm going to move it a little bit further by decreasing this third number and then increase the extrusion depth amount. Just make sure that this number doesn't exceed the depth amount of both layers and it will just merge into the shape below with no issues. And then I just need to do this with all of my shape layers until the depth has been added to each one of them to make it 3D but also to retain the original hierarchy of my 2D version of this image. And with that the badge is now turned into a 3D object but it still looks a little bit flat, but there are some simple effects you can add to make it look a lot more interesting. Step three, refining the look of your 3D badge. Now to make your 3D badge have a little bit more detail and showcase the depth on your 3D objects. To do this, I'm going to recommend two techniques you can add to your shapes. These can be added individually or they can be added together. The first one is to add a stroke color to all of your shapes. By adding a stroke to one of your 3D shape layers, which is a slightly darker tone of your shape's fill colour, it will make the extruded parts of your 3D shape that colour. This when done right will make the extruded sections stand out much clearer. To add a stroke colour, just select your shape, and when you see this arrow next to the add button at the top of your screen, click it and select stroke. By default it will go to white, so use the eyedropper after selecting the colour to match it to your fill colour, and then just drag it down slightly in the colour map, and there you go. And with me only using three main colours on this badge, it means I only have to do this three times. As long as I copy the darker blue to the blue shapes and the darker yellow to the yellow shapes, etc. Then this process can be done incredibly quickly. The second technique, which again you can add by itself or you can use in conjunction with the stroke method, is by adding some lights into your composition. By default, your 3D shapes will react to the lights in any composition. So by placing them strategically, you can light up certain sections and therefore this will improve the look of your 3D shapes. To add these, simply go to Layer, Add, New and Light. From the various lights available, I selected a Spotlight. From there, I can go into the light settings on the light layer itself and then I can change its position, point of interest and brightness. For these sort of animations, I will tend to add a light shining to the right side of my object and then another to the left side of my object and then I'll add a last one behind my object. And with that, my object looks the way I want it to. And I can use the null object that I created earlier to add an overall animation to my object, which I've been doing whilst editing this tutorial by having it rotate on the Y axis throughout to see the overall look of my 3D shapes. But with these shapes being individual layers, I can also have them animate in and out together or in sequence or at random. It gives you the freedom to make some really simple, cool looking 3D animations without too much effort having to be put into it. If you want more info on these low poly 3D techniques, I go into a little bit more detail in my previous 3D After Effects tutorial where I created some simple 3D logos, again just using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. But with that all that's left to do is to add a solid layer coloured black as my background, place it to the bottom of my composition and then I can render out this composition. And with that my animation is now complete. And that everyone is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click the like button as well as leave a comment and also make sure you hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on. At the time I'm recording this, uh, the channel has just hit over 1000 subscribers, which is absolutely mental. Thank you guys so much for doing that. I really do appreciate it. I'm hoping to get more videos out more frequently on this channel because I enjoy doing it. And if you guys go over and check out my Instagram and see any techniques in my own animations that you guys would like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.